sure it to them. Let's try and light the live because we don't have a lot of people here. But we do have someone coming up. Hey, what's up, Isaiah? Yo, what's good? Do you have an argument for the existence of God? Arguments? Uh, I wouldn't say because I'm not one to argue, you know. Um, you mentioned, I heard that you mentioned you're an Argument and proof are synonyms. Huh? Argument and proof are synonyms. Oh. Well, I don't know. I mean, I kind of like just starting a conversation and seeing where it goes, you know. It's not like my intention is just to, all right, prove this, prove that. Uh, you mentioned you were an expert. So you don't have a proof? It's That's something you can't really do and you cannot do. Well, I wouldn't agree with that. But why, why if you're that? just saying, oh, because I have just no reason to suspect that. Presumably, it's logically possible anyone defends either the proposition God exists or God doesn't exist, you know, indexed to the model of God you're working with. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a number of gods that have been falsified and others that, you know, are either trivially true, necessarily true, or have maybe some good epistemic warrant to believe in. So I've, obviously, I'm not going to believe that. I don't know who believes that, that you can't prove or disprove the existence of God. That's just like a nonsense view that every apologist and every atheist would presumably, or at least a large number of atheists would disagree. All apologists, their whole point is to like prove the existence of God. So obviously, you know, they would disagree with you. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to... If I'm jumping like too too quick to like your understanding, then just let me know. But I just it's because you mentioned you know you're an ex-Christian, so because yep. of that, I want to know like kind of in a personal level, what then made you become atheist for that reason? Because you you have a background of oh yeah, so I just did Bayesian analysis, and when I consider my web of experience, I just have low prior probability and things that would feature an evidence for the existence of God, which would just uh, you know inversely be uh, unexpected if the hypothesis were true. So it's just evidence against the proposition God exists. And another thing is just the fact that um. You know, atheism is just inherently more plausible, which is just like, it just means it's inherently more more plausible that a God doesn't exist. So obviously I'm going to believe in the more plausible view, just because if we consider, um, because obviously whichever have more evidence, it's just a synthetic fact. And if we just consider atheism and, and theism, we juxtapose them. Um, presumably as an atheist, you can have like an entirely naturalistic schema of explanations or even be just generally committed to like metaphysical naturalism in which you like, explain everything naturalistically. And with that, of course you can just, have, it's logically possible you have equal explanatory power and just deflate your ontological schema so you just have less ontological commitments so you just have like an ontologically parsimonious view so it's just atheism is just inherently more plausible i'm trying so to obviously i'm gonna keep it real i'm gonna keep it real I, I but what might, are like what are your reasons might, to believe god exists huh because i'm curious yeah what are your reasons to believe god does exist I feel like who created me, you know, I, what I think of, what I think of is I like to go to the basic, you know, typical, oh, big bang theory and all that. Well, let's say there was a big bang theory, you know, you know, a lot of people say it was atoms. It created, uh, it created a huge explosion, which made us. I don't know who says that. That's not what the big bang is at all. It's not, there was no atoms before the big bang or during the big bang. So the big bang there was just an explosion that created us though. Let's say there was no, it wasn't atoms, an it was explosion just an either. Then what was it? But an expansion of the universe. The universe already existed. The Big Bang doesn't exist. Exactly. Okay, so if the universe already the existed, the universe. how would the universe you know? exist? That's what I like to think about it. Well, that's a different question because what you just talked about was the Big Bang explaining the existence of the universe. It just doesn't. I'm not explaining just like, the existence. I'm saying because you, you okay, asked so, me why would I feel or why do I think. But you're, okay, but look, presumably you're using God to explain why the universe exists, right? Yeah, right. And then, and then you just appeal to the Big Bang. And if you're if you're not trying to like... Uh, imply that the Big Bang is a type of explanation for the existence of the universe. Then why are you bringing up the Big Bang? If that's not like, then don't like. It's extraneous to the conversation. Because if the Big Bang doesn't talk about you know the universe coming to existence, and you think God explains the universe coming to existence, I why mention the Big Bang at all? I brought it up because it's a typical, and I'm not trying to speak for you, you know, because I know every atheist might have their own viewpoint. It's just from me, that's a typical like explanation that an atheist will say to me, you know, the Big explanation Bang. for what. For why they don't believe in it, because they just think, okay, the Big Bang theory, it was just. What about the Big Bang theory makes them believe that God doesn't exist? They think that we just came from nothing. That's that's all what it is. Some, I'm not speaking what? for all. I'm just saying a lot of people think. What we do just you mean came, came from, from nothing? nothing? Huh? What do you mean came from nothing? Like came into existence. But what do you mean from by come from nothing? Is what I'm asking. Because the the whole idea, I guess, I might not be educated, then educate me. Because if anything, what I've been told... Yeah, all the Big Bang is, is just, I don't know if you like this, I, at least for me in middle school, sixth grade, this is what I was taught. But in middle school, all like all the Big Bang is, it's just like the universe, sorry, the universe had its singularity state where it's like infinitely dense and hot. And it just expanded due to scalar fields. And that's literally all it is. It's not an explosion. 
because there's not a chemical reaction that causes a boom. There's not an explosion. It's like a destructive impact in space. The, mm-hmm. the, the Big Bang is the expansion of space. So it's just like, that's just like a category error, or at least that right. doesn't seem conceptually coherent. All the Big Bang is is like um, how the universe expanded to, you know, the observable universe. That's right, what it right. really is. Right. So I, yeah, I might like have been, I might have been sufficient not... evidence to believe in it. Right. There's like background radiation, micro microwave radiation that we, and we also see like redshift of nebulons and stuff like that. And we can observe the radiation. There's like a point we can notify. And then there's like, we can see where the universe is expanding from. Mm-hmm. We can see the rate of which it's expanding and we can, you know, estimate the length of the universe. And if we just, you know, um, do the inverse where we know the natural speed it expands and retract we just have a singular singularity in which the universe came from. You know what I'm noticing right now? It's your, your way of talking, and it's not it's nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong. It's because you're very you have a lot of knowledge, and that's what I'm taking in. I'm taking it into consideration. You have a not a, a, a lot of knowledge, and you to me, you it seems that you have more education than me, and you're smarter than me. So what I from from what I'm noticing, it's like I start to think like, okay, then do you, do you ever wonder like? How are you smart? How how do you have that capability to you know like think the way you think? Like how how are you just you? I don't I don't even know what you're asking. I'm trying to I'm trying to lead from what I'm saying to to kind of the whole topic about God. Yeah, but I don't know what you're asking there. I'm definitely not sure how that relates it's to the God. The way that your brain is, yeah, you're intelligent. It's just I'm just reading um like I'm reading like comments too, but it's like it's your intelligence that makes me like think like. You can't just like, just exist. Like I honestly feel like if we have the ability, I what do you mean by can't there? At, like, huh? Are you saying it's like logically impossible that I, I just exist without a god? Because there's presumably no contradiction in the expression "I exist and there exists no god." So it's not logically impossible. It's also not nomologically impossible because it's not it's not like inconsistent with nomic laws, right? Like if we consider the laws of physics or natural laws, mm-hmm. nothing about the physical laws like um, make it such that it's not that's going to be inconsistent with the laws of physics that God doesn't exist. That doesn't follow either. So I don't know what you're, there's not, it, it, obviously you can exist and have no God. There's no logical contradiction. In fact, it could just be a brute fact. I don't know if you know what that is. No, but tell me what it is. You, you believe, oh, okay. Yeah. All brute fact is some proposition that's true and has no further reducible explanation, which is something that presumably at least everyone in my experience is committed to. Namely you, you believe God is not explained by anything, right? And that it, it's true God exists and no further fact explains the existence of God. So yes, as long as you many... make one brute fact commitment, um, of course, the atheist can equally make the same commitment. Now, the atheist can make the commitment that the universe merely exists, right? That's a brute fact. In the yeah. same respect, you believe God's a brute fact. But you're like, but presumably you have no reason to suspect the universe is even explained by anything. Now, when we talk about, you know, um, I don't know, like there's a there's a painting, you know, we would suspect there's a painter. Now, that's wrong for like multiple issues. The first is the fact that there's, again, nothing logically impossible. This is just like Hume's critique, right? It's obviously logically possible that, you know, the universe in its formation arranged such particles that there was a painting, right? Like a perfect uh, Van, like Van Gogh painting, you know, just naturally developed by the dispositions of the universe while it was like cooling from cosmic inflation or something like that. And it forms a painting. That's logically possible. So, of course, like everything that which in our experience we associate with an inventor and seems complex and intricate in such a way in which we're disposed to believing you know, has a creator can equally just not have a creator. Now, the reason why we associate is because the the first instance of the object is associated with an entity that which we are aware of the mechanistic process in which they invented it and is, is constantly reproduced in our web of experience such that in our web of experience, every item that such it has relevant similarities to that object is reinvented by another human. Okay. But there's nothing, that's just to say that I'm, I have this psychological influence that because I'm acquainted with, that's just like, um, your web of it, like that just deals with the frequency of your observations and how you're psychologically motivated to, um, you know, predicate these things of design. But that doesn't mean if, if one, you know, if a book just randomly appeared, mm-hmm. um, or we just, I just see a book on the floor. It's equally as, um, plausible that the book, um, presumably was just created by, by, you know, natural dispositions and just landed on earth versus it being created. But the thing is, we're just going to say that it's more probable that it was, you know, created by someone just because, when we consider my web of experience, it just seems more coherent with the contents of my experience that, you know, such object with these relevant similarities are made by someone. Okay, but when we look at a planet, we don't observe those features, right? We never observed a planet created, right? So maybe we can index this predicate or this, you know, um, we can make this Bayesian case 
um, where we associate certain objects with predicates of design. But that's only to objects that we actually have good, sufficient warrant to believe that were designed. So it would just be like a hasty generalization to include objects you know, outside of our web experience that are psychologically associated with such features as if they you know, are. So of course, when we see a planet, we're not gonna say a planet is designed in the same respect that a computer is because there's nothing that actually indicates that, at least in my experience, I've, I don't know if you had an experience in which you observed a planet being created, but I would just oh, suspect oh, that no. that's dishonest <laughs> to say, yeah. So obviously there's, you know, arguments like design and stuff fail for that reason. But even worse than that, when we say like what explains, um, you know, we know that something is designed, let's say a computer and we yeah. say, okay, the, the process of which a designer manifests some design uh, item, right? That's going to be a causal explanation. Okay. Well, if you read like SCP or any IEP or any standard, um, some, you know, some, any, any like type of material into philosophy, particularly metaphysics, when we talk about causation, well, causation is, is a type of relationship between events. So basically, it's a relationship in which the relata are eventual. Okay. What's a, what is what's an event? Relata? What's a relata? I never a, heard of it. a relata are just the items in relation. Oh, okay. So when I say two things are in a relationship, right? Like, let's say me and my girlfriend, we're in a relationship. The relata is me and my spouse or, you know, okay. my partner, right? Yeah, so that would be the relata. There might be, you know, obviously more than two things in the in the relata or in the relationship. The relata might, may be more than two things and a relationship might constitute uh, a relation of more than a pair, right? But the, the point is that when we consider um, these types of things, we're not going to actually, when we talk about causal explanation, what a, again, because what a causal explanation is standardly, is a type of explanation or relationship in which the relata are events. Okay, now what is an event standardly in, in philosophy? Well, an event is a space, an instance of space-time, right? So what, it, what a causal connection is, is some explanatory relation between events, right? You know, say, you know, me kicking a ball, the ball flying into a window and then it making impact with the window and shattering it, right? That's a type of causal relation because when we consider the relata, the events, um, you know, they have some explanatory relation or under, you know, some type of epistemic or scientific norm we associate it with something that we consider explanatory, right? We would at least say uh, that there is some type of explanatory relation going on when we observe, um, you know, the, that chain reaction of the ball making impact and shattering the window. But when we consider the Big Bang, we say what it, what explains or what causes the universe, that's going to be a category error because, again, the universe is just space-time. Right? This is known ever since Einstein's era, even before, ever since like Kantian transcendental aesthetics in his critique of pure reason. It's it's just been known that the universe is just space-time. The universe is just the unification of space and time. Okay, so when you say what is the cause for the universe, you're saying what is what event explains the universe, but the universe is the set of events. So event an event can't explain the set of events because the set of events encapsulates all events. So there is no explanatory relation to the universe, just yeah. inherently because there's no such thing as a cause for the universe just by definition. It's like saying, how do you know that this bachelor is unmarried? Because an, a bachelor means an unmarried man. How do you know that bachelor is a man? It's just analytically true. It's in fact That's trivial. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about events of time. J uh, just a simple yes or no question. Do you have in, like some knowledge though within Bible or, or um, religious speaking at all? Or not really? Or do you not have knowledge about the Bible? Huh? Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Um, not really, no. Okay, okay. So if you did it would make sense but uh i'm not i'm not one to like just say oh you need to you need to agree with me and that's that no 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 so you talk about the existence of time but when you do understand kind of how how god is it's very like no all i'm saying is that just to uh, explain how the universe just like by definition can't have a cause like a causal explanation for its existence wait what <laughs> no yeah i'm just explaining how when we talk about like um a painter has a pain like there's a painting, and of course, every painting has a painter. Yeah. The type of association that we have psychologically when we attribute the predicate of paint, painting versus painter is just merely that um, there's like a causal connection between the painter and the painting, right? And I'm just saying that there's a category error when we say like, you know, let's just say everything in my experience um, hasn't like an explanation, right? But everything in my experience has a causal explanation. Okay, so even if everything in the universe we see has a cause, um, it doesn't follow that the universe is explained because the the type of explanation that would have to be had to explain the existence of the universe is necessarily not a causal one. And the only type of explanation presumably that features, at least in my experience that I'm aware of, is a causal explanation. So there's not gonna be any relevant facts in my experience that would allow me to manifest the belief that there is something um, that explains the existence of the universe because the only type of explanations I observe are causal explanations and the universe just necessarily can't have a causal explanation. That, that's why, that's okay, now that's why. Since you now said that's that, why I said, 
that, that's why I said that presumably then there's no reason to suspect the universe has a, an explanation for its existence. And then we can make the, you know, the same brute fact commitment that a theist does in which we say the universe is unexplained. And now we're actually just going to be, we're just going to make it, uh, uh, we're just going to be playing chess and we're just making the smarter abductive move. And we will just win as the atheists because we're making the most plausible case. Well, what because they're making the assumption that the universe is explained by something. And then there's just no reason to suspect that. That's that. why, so, um, that's why, because there, you have some reasoning, but then there isn't, or to some people, it just doesn't make sense. Because like I was saying, if you had knowledge about like the Bible or religious views, you would understand. And some people would know that God is, is before, beyond and after time. He's time himself. Yeah, and no, it's, that's, it's very hard hard that's one reason I don't believe in God. Huh? Yeah, because everything you said there entailed a contradiction. That that's why, and a lot of people do see the Bible as a. But as you know, contradictory. when we say something, and, and, and me myself, something's I, I, some, contradictory. Huh? It just means it's. Yeah, you know, when we say something's contradictory, it just means it's impossible. So it can't obtain in reality. If something's logically impossible, it just means it doesn't feature in reality. And reality is just like the set of things that are real. So if we consider God to be a real entity, right? He exists. It's true. God exists, meaning it's real that God exists. It's you know, the the entity God really exists, or it's whatever. We can just take. Well, presumably, you take true to be a synonym with real. So God is real. It's true. God exists. They're pre presumably like the same thing. They're tantamount. So when we say God exists, if it entails logical contradiction, then it just isn't real. And the issue there is in the way you described God just made a contradiction obtain. So it just makes it the case that it's not possible God exists, at least under your lights of how you characterize God. Right? And that's, that's one reason I don't believe in God, or at least that model strongly. There's it's many, logically impossible. There's many characteristics about God, but I'm saying that's one of them. That's very, it's such like a, like hard because I've, I've tried like doing my own research and just trying understanding it, but it's very like hard to understand. Like, because we don't have that full knowledge that you were saying. That, not, oh, I don't know. No, no, we, don't we can't that. understand how it's impossible though. It's no, not that we can't understand the, the I'm talking about the universe, how it's like the existence of it, how you were saying uh, something about like, but we never observe the, anything come into creator. existence. What were you saying? But we never observe anything come into existence ever. That's true. Yeah, so there's not going to be reason to suspect that things that exist have explanation for their existence. Right? There's no reason. We never, you know, observed something that came into existence. So there's no motivation. We would just be agnostic to whether or not, you know, uh, the existence of things are explained. And presumably, if you say that there is this, like, you know, it is de facto that things that exist are explained, unless you're going to do, like, um, you know, some special pleading. There has to be some, either God is going to be explained as he exists, or there has to be some relevant fact um, that would uh, mitigate his relation to this like uh, ontological explanatory principle, right? Like this type of PSR. And that's, I've never seen any good case around that, at least not that, you know, criticisms hadn't defeated. I'm just taking it. Right, so we never observe things come into existence. So there's just not any reason to believe things come into existence. So they want to make the commitment that God explains the universe and it's a brief fact that God exists. So we can just say, you know, we're more, we have some motivation to suspect, at least agnostically, that there isn't like actual reason to believe that the universe is explained. So they're making the assumption that the universe is explained without, you know, sufficient warrant. So now we're just going to make the same commitment in which we have a same, you know, the brute fact that the universe is unexplained, similar to God. And we're not having an assumption held in the background that the universe is explained because our beliefs are motivated by evidence, right? A dogmatic attitude is furnished by available evidence to the agent. And we don't have evidence that things that come into existence, especially not the universe, right? The set of uh, natural entities, right? So we have no reason to believe the set of natural entities comes into existence, let alone any object in the natural world. So they're making a very radical jump. So now we can just eliminate the assumption, make the same amount of brute fact commitments, one, and then we have a more plausible thesis. Hopefully you I, understand that. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Because it's, I'm going to keep it blunt. It's like your your word choice is is 10 times like the words that are in my vocabulary. That's that's honestly how it is for me. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand your way of speaking, but it's, it's very just, to me, okay, it's just like, again, I said, it's not like a, I'm trying to create a statement and just make a point or, or just argue. It's just, it's very, it's very different to everybody when it's like, because I'm not the one to also say like, oh, believe what the Bible says, but it's like, just me personally, it's like, I just look at myself as a human being, you know, I just look at myself and then I see other people around me and it's like, we all think we all have the same like 
organs and in our bodies i mean we might be missing some we might not but it's just i just see it beautifully as how are we created like this and what and exact and kind of going back to what you're saying the the observation of of a creation and not a creator i, I might have misquoted you i might have misquoted you correct me you said something about that how like we don't always get to see the creation like occurring but it's like that's what that's what makes it so fascinating into into believing in a creator which most christians do because it's like just being human is so beautiful if you think about it it's it's, it's so beautiful and just just the many wow. thoughts that flow in to thinking our design the way we can think the way the brain works like it's it's it's, it's amazing so it leads into well, look, conversation. there's there's other stuff that look so presumably we don't actually have when we consider god as an explanation for natural phenomena um the thing is if all we take god to be um is like you know some mind that manifested the the universe into existence um maybe he also has omni properties there's nothing of that that we would actually at least not that i'm aware of that we would furnish predictions of like you know particular models like of presumably um there can be gods that you know want a world in which we breathe underwater or you know our neural physiology is such a way in which the brain is like radically different so when we talk about god and we're like the brain operates in such a way that his design is like so complex that it's kind of peculiar to think that it was made naturally well when we consider like an omniscient omnipotent god you know he has like infinite models of a of a brain he could ever make right he can make infinite logically possible models of a brain so it's actually always going to be underdetermined because at least in a naturalistic um space there's going to be like um the possibility space for natural explanations is going to be finite and for god it's going to be infinite and if that's just the case presumably it's just like explanatorily inert because um there's not going to be anything that features in explanations for like an infinite set of things that you know he doesn't make right like why doesn't god make every brain different in fact why would we wouldn't expect that creator of the universe would actually make brains the way that they are we so wouldn't expect it, anything if you think about it because we don't know it's very yeah, so like, we, we don't but that's the issue as using it, him to explain stuff because if there's no background information as to why god you know makes particular like models of things like a brain right he doesn't like why he makes a, a model of a brain such as this um then there's no reason to predict that because the brain is complex in the way that it operates mechanistically or something or the way that it, it looks that we would associate that with a god because there's nothing that informs us of why God would actually want to make that type of brain. That's the, we have reasoning for certain creations that we have here on the earth. But again, like kind of how you were saying, like what? yes. And yes, you're kind of right. There is no real reasoning. It's kind of like when people say, well, who made God? Like that's just, it's certain things that our brain is not capable and it's way beyond our capability. Like these are just going to say it's a good fact that God exists. I'm what? Well, I'm just saying that these are just going to say it's a brute fact that God exists. So there's nothing not, that explains not, God. Okay, you know what? Because for me, I'm not going to just say I'm 100% true Christian. I'm 100%. I, no, because me, I, I I lack faith sometimes. I, I, I lack faith. So I'm not going to say that because me, sometimes I'll question like, you know what? Oh, like what exactly is real? You know, what is God really like? I, it's just something that everybody has their own personal, you know, like. I guess doubts or thoughts, but it's like, yeah, it's like I'm not going to just honestly just say, oh, I got 100% um exists but to me personally i agree so just in many different ways that i feel like it might just not make sense to you that's honestly what it is well when you said that well the issue was at least when you said that god exists after before and outside of time um the issue wasn't that i don't understand it it's that i understand how a contradiction obtains from that expression which just makes it that it's impossible that that model of god exists because it just entails a contradiction which i already explained how a contradiction is just um, described to be that which doesn't obtain in reality. So it's just not real that that God exists, or it's not true that that God exists necessarily, right? Because when we talk about time, right? When you say before time, time is the notion of change, right? Like, you know, concepts like before, after, during, those are all temporal, that's like temporal language. So when you say like God exists before time, what you're saying is that there's an instance of time in which God existed like i don't that's just like not a coherent concept that's not like and that's intelli okay, intelligible that, that entails contradiction and that's why it's like that's why some people just because of reasoning i guess not reasonings but i guess because of that type of idea that's why it doesn't make sense so people just say you know i just don't believe in god it's just to a point where it's yeah it's just so complex like well it's not no it's that it's, it's, it's just false you can't, you that god exists the creation it's like necessarily just not true what did you say no, I'm just saying that that God would, it's not like it's hard to, it's just necessarily false that that God exists. 
So are you just saying, are you specifying a God or are you just saying God? Like the idea No, I'm, just, of God? I'm saying in your description of God, where you said that he's before time and before time means prior to the existence of time and before is a temporal language. So it would just, the, the contradiction there would just be that God is inside and outside time. That's, so that would just yeah. entail a contradiction. Yeah, and that would just mean that that God doesn't exist. It's, it's not even logically honestly, possible he exists, even worse. It's just like, yeah, it's not even logically possible that he exists if there's a contradiction. Because all contradiction means is logical impossibility. So if it's logically impossible that that God exists, then it can never be real that a God before that exists, um, you know, outs like before time exists. I'm hearing you. I'm just. I think it might just. Uh, no, I think it's just. It's so hard to put into words that, like. It's like there's no. It's like. Some people will know or maybe agree or disagree with what I'm saying that he is outside and inside of time. Like he is time himself. But the thing. Is, I know. I used to like, think the same is, thing when I was a Christian. Huh? It's just not. Yeah, I used to think the same thing when I was Christian. It's just not a coherent concept. It entails contradiction. That's why, like, those gods um, are just, like, described to be false. Like, they just necessarily don't, aren't, they aren't real necessarily. They just, they're not logically possible. It's not possible that they exist. So, I'm not trying to, like, repeat the same, repeat the same thing. So, like, is your viewpoint on things i guess it's like do you are you the type of person to like need to see something to believe it mm, i don't know i'm not an, like an empiricist if that's what you're asking what's an empiricist um it's an epistemic view that you believe that everything is known through the senses that there's nothing that's non-sensory so mm -hmm. if it's not tangible then it doesn't um exist or if at least if it's not like like, you know, there's like a number of like deductive arguments that are for like immaterial things, like spirits, souls. Do you um, believe you know, in pl that? Platonic entities? No. Those are usually nonsense views. At least as far as that I've heard been argued. I used to be, I used to have the view that the mind was immaterial, but I don't have that view anymore. I'm not a dualist. That's. I feel like the mind itself is already something that's beyond our, our comprehension. We might know certain nerves or the the parts in the brains, but it's just the way things just go together that it's just those like small details within kind of like what I was just saying earlier, just small details with us existing as creations. And that's I'm not trying to say like let's say there isn't a creator, okay? It's just those small details of being a creation existing. That that doesn't make you, and I'm asking you personally, like that doesn't make you think, how was I designed like this? It doesn't even make you think that there is a creator? No. Like, I already explained that because, like, there's nothing that would inform us why there exists a creator that he would, you know, develop this type of, like, model of a brain. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that there's a creator because there's no predictions generated under the hypothesis that there's, like, a creator of the universe that we'd, we would, like, deduce the prediction that he would also, we would also expect that we have brains in some relevantly similar way as they are synthetically exhibited, that would like be evidence for the hypothesis that like a God exists. Hmm. Like, let me just ask you this. Do yeah. you think it's possible that God could have made us to breathe underwater, right? There's like a world in which the whole planet is like underwater and we could have, you know, been made creatures that all breathe underwater, right? God could have possibly made that world, right? Could have, but who knows? Who mm -hmm. knows? Yeah, so it's logically possible God could have made that world. Do you know what informs you as to why he didn't make that world? Because of why he didn't? Mm hmm Because inversely, to not know why he... He did, it's just to not know why he didn't.
I wouldn't know. Antithetical reasons or motivation for the negation of the proposition. Exactly. So if we don't know why God didn't make that world, in turn, we just don't know why he did. So if we don't know why he made this particular world, it just wouldn't ex be expected under the hypothesis there's like a God that we'd expect this world. Now, if we, you know, use like, um, I don't know, natural sciences, there's like a number of like tentative, integrative, um, you know, hypotheses that have very strong, robust predictions mm -hmm. that are generated. So it's going to have like strong uh, predictive fertility and explanatory power that, you know, theism is just going to like be inert. It's not, it's just going to lack. There's nothing that we would like, just merely from there being a mind that created the world, would we expect there to be any other predictions really generated, let alone whether or not they're testable. I hear you. I think it's like, because what you've been saying, it's not like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I wouldn't, no, some of it, it's just to me, that's, that's the thing. It's just some of it to me might not make sense to me. And I feel like some things I'm saying is just not making sense to you, but it's like, that's, it's, it's not, I'm, I wouldn't say it's like two knives meeting. It's just, it's very like, it's not like I can just prove that's the thing. It's, I don't think anybody can just prove. Well, I don't, I'm going further than like asking like for proof because I just take proof to be like, like to be like a deductive argument, like an inference, but I don't even think there's like evidence for a God. In fact, I don't even think there's predictions that a God would generate. So I don't even think, I think it's just evidentially inert the fact that there is no predictions that would be generated under the hypothesis of God. So there just wouldn't, we wouldn't, there wouldn't be evidence that exhibits in motivation for the hypothesis that raises like the plausibility of the view. So when you say evidence for the God, it's like, are you just saying God in general, like many gods or? Oh, yeah, all I mean by God is just a mind that created the universe. If you want, you can even bake in omni properties. If you believe in omni benevolence, omnipotence. But furthermore, those are going to be like beliefs that would also not contribute to like the ex like God explaining anything, and would actually make the the hypothesis vicious, right? Because if we say, because it's logically possible that God has sufficient enough. I don't even know what you would say realistically, but let's just say God has enough energy to create a universe, and He's still not all powerful, right? It's not necessary to create a universe; you have to be all powerful. It's logically possible you create a, a universe and you're not all powerful. So when we make the claim that God's all powerful, there's nothing that we're going to even have, you know, any reason to believe that either. That he's only like, or all knowing, right? Maybe he does know a set of things. Like we're not going to make, presumably you can't defend the claim he's all knowing or that he's all powerful or any of those things. And nothing, none of his feats are going to either exhibit that because for any feat that God um, actuates, we can like fix some parameter of like, you know, maybe energy needed to create a universe or something. Um, or like how much effort it would take or something. I don't, I'm not really sure what that would mean, but, or like how much knowledge you would know to make, to know X, right? Like God knowing like anything wouldn't follow that he knows everything, right? Even if like all the propositions God said were true, you know, or I'm not even gonna say that, that would, that would just, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those, those more bolder omni properties, which is not, they wouldn't help, right? Because you can equally explain God creating the universe or you can have the view God created the universe. He's not omnipotent. So omnipotence doesn't help in him explain and God explaining the creation of the universe. So God can equally create a universe and not be omnipotent. So now when you bake in that God is omnipotent, like what's the defense for that claim? Oh, because God said it. Well.
Do you have like maybe any any more questions? What made you? Uh, I don't. Even, I think I, I think you might have answered that already. I don't know if someone asked you. What made you just be an atheist? Like stop from what you were believing to what you? Yeah. So I was an apologist for a bit. So I used to debate for the existence of God for about like I wouldn't even say a full month, like three weeks or like two and a half weeks. But I did it like at least five times or something like that. And I wasn't I wasn't really performing well, so I decided to you know watch videos to help me. So I started like watching. Um, apologists debate videos and I started like mimicking them um, and then like from there I, I watched like a couple people that I would follow around I, I saw like debates from them that I thought they like got destroyed I was like wow the people I idled are like even I'm acknowledging that they're like getting folded in these debates that I'm watching so I just like decided to be agnostic I was like you know all these like you know like justification and belief all this does deals with like philosophy so I decided to be agnostic something most theists don't do I just took a break from, I just like suspended my belief to whether God existed or not. I decided to read some philosophy, take a break. And I read like philosophy for like about a month or something less than that. And I decided, you know, just based on my readings, what I would think would be more rational to defend based on what I read, yeah. right? The conclusion I come to independent of, you know, the fact that I was raised into Christianity yeah. and all that. And I just didn't, I thought to be realistic after reading for a bit, I just thought the belief in God was like stupid. And then I just like became an atheist. So do you feel like a little personal question? Do you do you feel like uh do you feel like you were just forced into Christianity young? Yeah, I was. Okay, but yeah, I, I still like did that, believe that's it. A, that, that's a, a big problem, I think. That a lot of well, people... I chose to get baptized on my own. Oh, okay. Well, but I feel like that being forced on you that might have could have had an effect. I'm not saying like oh it had an effect on who you are now. No, because you just have your way of thinking, and that's that's fine. That's fine. But it's just like it can it can alter with people's minds, you know? Just that. That whole like, oh, we we have a God, we have a God, believe in him, you know, serve him. It's just, it's more than that when you understand God, you know, for me, because I'm not going to tell you to do it, but I, I'll like read my Bible, you know, and the more I read it, the more I get closer to understanding him and understanding how we are who we are, you know, and how it kind of correlates to real world things that are happening and that has happened. So it, it's just my personal belief that that's kind of why I believe in God, because I also think about it. Well, like, for example, this is kind of like an argument that's both... Um, pretty much every religion can actually use to their favor, but even worse than that, it just like let's just say the set of you know maybe historical facts mm -hmm. or predictions are true. You know, let's say like Jesus makes a prediction or Moses makes makes a prediction and it's true or something. Right. That's still not strong evidence of no, God. No, no, I, I agree with you. No, I agree with you because it's and the thing in the Bible. In fact, I wouldn't even say those are their evidence own for understanding, God. and that's a lot, that's the thing a lot of people do. They try to go off of what they think it's interpreting or certain things are interpreted as but it's not that it's not that you don't want to go off your own understanding so that's why you know there's churches and there's people or, or there's bible studies because people help you understand that in a more like more clear way you know but oh you also mentioned well, before. Oh, maybe sorry, look there's like views that have like very good maybe we have very good like understanding of right and maybe we can um like maybe something like, I don't know, maybe we have a good understanding of string theory, but you know, like I would Did still cons that? consider that. string theory. I've heard that, that. Oh, I don't know string theory well. I used to read about it, but it's like a really bad view. It pretty much tries to explain quantum gravity or how gravity operates like on a, on a quantum scale. Yeah. And it makes these postulates of additional dimensions and deep branches um, to explain certain phenomena that are exhibited in the quantum realm to explain how gravity would operate. And it makes more commitments um, than it does uh make like very strong explanation right the very the strongest explanations it makes it, it takes more um it just has to inflate it's like ontological economy more and more that just makes the the hypothesis or theory of quantum like quantum string theory more and more vicious so you know views like quantum quantum or like just string theory i gonna just say views like string theory we can you know have a very very in-depth intricate concise understanding of maybe right just like the bible doesn't mean that first that it's it's logically coherent, right? Maybe there's a way that we can understand whatever, right? There can still be contradictions, maybe. So what you're saying is like um, when you're saying there is like there could be, like it's not like everything is though, right? Is that what you're kind of saying? Well, I'm just trying to respond to the fact that you're saying like Bible studies can help with the comprehension of what the Bible says. Oh, right. I'm saying merely the fact that something we can maybe comprehend something doesn't mean, of course, that it's true or even that it's like slightly reasonable to believe, right? There we can make a number of things that you know, have we have really good understanding of and it's still like false like i would take it that string theory is like a nonsense scientific view 
And I'm pretty sure even empirical studies would indicate that most um, people who deal with particle physics and quantum mechanics also take the view that like string theory is a pretty terrible model. Yet there's still, you know, hundreds of thousands probably, or maybe not hundreds of thousands, but there's easily thousands, maybe even tens, dozens of thousands of scientists who are like quantum or believe in string theory. They understand it very well and it's still like a nonsense view. Do you, um, are you the types of like, believe in history though, right? Sorry, what happened? Are you the type to believe in history though? Do I, well, I don't take it that history is like a proposition. Are you just saying like, do I believe in like consensus of historians? Like, yeah. Like almost histor no, like I historical it, like artifacts or like historical like things that were kept. Like, well, if it's a you, fact like, huh? that the artifact was found, then I get, you know, of course I'm going to believe the, the artifact was found. I mean, if I believe that like these items, these artifacts are just items of history, of course, I'm just going to believe that it was found some item of history. But would you not believe not that, that really of history is true? Like it, it, it was actually like a thing. It wasn't like, well, if it's like... a thing that's found. If it's like an artifact. Oh, if you're talking about video footage of finding no, historical that. facts, like, I'm not really sure what you're asking that. Okay. So I'm talking about history because let's say scriptures, like biblical historical scriptures, when those are found, like mainly Greek um, scrolls, that that's kind of one way of the existence of like how the Bible is true. But then again, no, that would just be evidence of the historical. Like, look, if I found like um, a book on Beowulf mm -hmm. from like I don't know, eighty thousand years ago, it doesn't follow that the contents of the artifact are true merely because it was a historical item, right? That there's a difference between the Bible being a true historical item. From it being that the historical items contents are all true that's like radically different like of course to say that the contents of the beowulf book that was find, found eighty thousand years ago is like obviously not tantamount to saying like it's true there's an eighty thousand year ago beowulf book i'm gonna ask you something it might seem like a dumb question you do you believe george washington existed yeah okay and why is that? Oh, well, merely because I take it that historicity as a humanian art is a very intricate uh, pedagogy that, you know, had centuries of great minds working and collecting data um, in a very um, intricate or they, they um, integrate a set of historical items in such a way in which they make an abductive linear case for events um, in history. And I believe there's also like forensic um, things that would influence their motivation in particular aging of historical items in which you know contribute but if you're talking like generally i just take the view that um i would just believe the consensus of historians right one one reason strongly is because um you know my academic schooling had employed uh historical education that obviously like george washington was included in so um you know um you know, very dubious things are not really considered like obviously in schools they're not going to like put in historical conspiracy theories right they're going to put something that is very very regarded as like true within the pedagogy so right. like so i yeah i'll just sorry, take a view of whatever someone in some field of study that i'm not well acquainted in that had you know decades of research intricately by a number of great minds throughout the eras um and they have like you know an integration with other tentative theories like um obviously like forensic science right there's like chemical research that uh goes into determining historical relevant facts when we consider historical items that are found like artifacts so the fact that it integrates with a number of other scientific pedagogy well i mean history isn't a science um but you know the fact that it does integrate with a number of other theories and that it, influ it influences other theories um, very strongly, right? It also generates predictive, as predictive fertility generates a number of predictions. There's like a large number of evidence we have, you know, of course, I'm just going to believe in like what the consensus has to say. Right. So I asked that the stronger the consensus, like I doubt there's any real, I don't even think that I'm not sure maybe there are, you know, there's always some radical, um, qualified someone, right? Maybe there is a qualified historian that has the relevant qualifications, maybe as a PhD, or maybe even just like a bachelor's degree. But at least that he has some relevant qualifications in which he can be labeled a historian and has done, you know, time and research in, you know, developing his beliefs. And he still maintains the belief like George Washington doesn't exist. But, you know, 
I would just believe that it's more coherent that the web of um, the web of you know historians is just more frequently like committed to the same view about like George Washington that would just like furnish the belief that George Washington was like a real historical person. Right. So I asked that because we also we have documents, we have things that include, you know, George Washington within, you know, like you, how you said, um, part of school, you said, was it school? Yeah, of course, everyone was taught about George Washington in school. Okay. In okay. the US. Okay. Right. Yeah. So because of that, and also, let's say, docu not only documents, but um, portraits, you know, painted of eyewitnesses of, you know, of George Washington, they saw his existence, you know, they, they painted him. So where I'm going is, I also think about it like, okay, so there's eyewitnesses of people that were in the Bible. And because of those eyewitnesses, they wrote things down, such as the chapters and scriptures, and those were in scrolls. And now, you know, translated into, you know, modern day Bible, King James, whatever you call it. But the only thing that, that I can also kind of, I guess, disagree then with that, like what I just said, is also the fact that, you know, you got people who, who will edit, you know, edit scriptures. And then it like, it does add contradictory or add, adds contradiction to, you know, like um, that true, like the true scriptures and what's real or wh what's actually um, authentic and what's not. But I, I think of it as since we have eyewitnesses in those in those times of, I guess you can call it Jesus's days. We have those eyewitnesses. They saw him. They followed him, which was his disciples. Um, OK, well, there's like first like there's like um, a set of conditions that are going to be um, that are going to go into factoring when we consider testimony, um, you know, mere first, the, just the fact that it's written that there's testimony, of course, doesn't follow. There is testimony, but even, even then when we consider testimony, testimony, isn't just like ubiquitously evidence, right? There's of course, many instances, if not 99.99% of testimony isn't considered evidence, right? And there's actually a very, very strict, um, framework in which we consider testimony evidence. One deals with competence of the agent, which talks about their knowledge, experience, abilities, um, what they observed, if they're even competent in relaying the events. Um, and if we don't have evidence that they're competent enough to relay the events, um, right, maybe uh, they can't, they have been, me been bad memory to recall events. They're bad at communicating information, especially accurately. Um, they have like issues with observation, especially in, in, in the past, those are going to contribute factors into um, the competence of the, the writer, right? Let alone if the, the story is fictitious, there's like, there's not, I'm not sure if there's any historical way in which we would consider a writing fictitious, but when we consider, um, you know, the scrolls from Jesus or whatever, that there's like 500 witnesses, there's actually only like one writing that there's 500 witnesses. Unlike with George Washington, um, there's like a consistent set of hundreds of artif like artifactual documents that are found of different people writing in different handwritings that we can identify as different people. And there's like even further artifacts of the writer that, you know, co contributes to the writing of that particular article of evidence that, you know, cooperates with the rest coherently, right? So there's just like a set of writings for Washington. Well, there is different writers. A, a set from what... Yeah, but when we talk but when we talk about writings, like um, there's 500 witnesses, there's not multiple writings of there being said to be 500 witnesses. There's only one, or at least yeah, one that I'm aware of. there 500 witnesses, but there's more than one uh, writers about those witnesses for example that's why when i was mentioning the i think the the 12 um oh literally i just blinked out uh, the 12 well, look, i don't I, I don't really know how like, historical evidence works well so that's why i just take the consensus yeah i don't really know how i uh, like history sorry historicity works in terms of evidence and artifacts and all that i'm not really well versed in that so like i said i take the consensus and it's actually not the consensus in history that jesus existed um let alone there's like a number of dispute of a number of historically relevant facts contributing to the Bible that um, are going to just not even play into whether or not um, anything of the Bible is real, just like facts related to what the Bible conveys historically being true. Um, you know, just yeah, stuff I was like just that. trying to get at because there's more than one writers, which is which I'm, I'm trying to say that those writers all contribute into explaining the idea and well, to me, the fact that Jesus existed, for example, Mark, Matthew, John those people all are included in different scrolls. They're not gonna, you're not gonna just see, oh, Mark wrote this or made by Mark, made by John in one scroll. No, there's different scrolls that were spread along the world that contain evidence for the existence of Jesus and things they witnessed. 
and it's not everything's just going to be about the 500 witnesses no but i'm just saying that because we have textual artifacts that also back up those other writers not just one writer but those other writers to me to me i'm not forcing that on you but i'm just saying to me that's what makes me believe that okay we have some saying that this man existed then that yeah but further, obviously that further continues into the whole idea of god and the creation and everything happening but yeah yeah but when there's you know when there's like relevant you know fields of study that are very intricate that go into like um you know propositions about historical events of course we're going to use that methodology in best like um you know ab abducing the facts so you know it's it's not very critical to just assume because you know the bible says it that you know it's actually a historical fact especially when it's like highly controversial within like historicity right so that's something that would just lower my prior in the probability of the historical fact being true the fact that it's not um the you know the dogmatic attitude or like the belief about the historical event is not ubiquitous or at least it's not like it doesn't matter if it's unanimous it's not even like agreed upon like a lot like empirically not not it's not a consensus it's actually a very um controversial view that Jesus historically existed um but again like I would just appeal to consensus for that reason but when we talk about testimony again um I'm pretty sure the writers were unidentified or anonymous I'm not sure again we would have to appeal to historical testimony or at least I would for whether or not the the writers of the bible or at least in whatever particular book of the bible was talking about the the 500 witnesses and if there's no um if we don't identify the person let alone the the facts of competence the facts of cooperation uh credibility consistency do you think it only matters if it is 500 witnesses like cuz it could have been it could have been one it could have been more than 500 it could have been less no, than the, 500 the issue isn't even cuz the issue is that it's written that's 500 witnesses not that there's um you know 500 artifacts of writings that we can assign to sit different like a uh, like these different historical items of different handwritings that we can like historically forensic that we would associate with different agents that are writing during um the time of the event or something like that that we can say there's 500 witnesses there's just one writing that describes 500 witnesses right now again when we deal with testimony and there's just one writing of 500 witnesses we would have to know the agent's competence so that would you know deal with their ability to observe accurately their ability to recall accurately right their um their ability to recall like memory their faculty of memory their faculty of communication especially if they're able to even articulate uh, accurately you know sometimes people are um not credible to right mm -hmm. um if there's anything like if we don't have justification that there's nothing um that would motivate the person the person to comp compromise their honesty or integrity um or their reputation then of course we can't take the testimony to be like evidence right and if we don't know the writer at all we don't know about their character then they're not going to be we're not going to have evidence trivially we're not going to have evidence in whether or not the the person who's writing has honest integrity and a reputation right if that's the only article of their writing then of course it's going to be we're just going to lower the prior and the writing being true again there's also have um and there also has to be cooperation with other articles of testimony but also independent evidence right um testimonial evidence doesn't actually work standalone and this is the way it's also used in jur juridicity right when we, when we talk about like legality uh, but e even the legality has higher stakes, right? They're sworn into honesty, right? So there's like a consequentialist motivation for the person who's providing testimony to also not, you know, lie or, you know, give to their best of their ability, given they can like, what, $500 or sorry, like it's anywhere from like 10000 to $50,000 charge and like up to five to 10 years in prison, right? So obviously like on a, just like when we consider the consequence of lying there, um, we're just gonna have a higher prior and them telling the truth. When we talk about historical writers where presumably, you know, the writer of the 500 witnesses didn't have like a gun to his head. There's no sworn, right? There's not high consequences, at least that we're not relevantly aware of in the background that would inform, inform us of the high prior of honesty. So we have nothing that contributes to the competence of the person, the credibility of the person. Um, there's no other relevant writings that would co cooperate with the witness testimony. Um, it, and by cooperation, I just mean whether um, you know, there's other forms of evidence or independent evidence that is consistent with that, which is different from general um, testimonial evidence consistency, which just deals with whether or not the testimony so insofar as itself is consistent. There's also things like uh, proximity, which deals with were they actually eyewitness or were they secondhand witness? 
where they third hand in which you know it's just like a chain of passed down stories now we don't actually know there's not at least again there's no independent evidence that would at least that i'm aware of that would you know motivate me into believing that the writer who says he was first-hand witness was actually a first-hand witness so to make the claim he was a first-hand witness you know maybe i would have higher priors in him being a first-hand witness you know even if we don't have the other conditions like competence cooperation consistency as long as i had you know evidence that he was first-hand witness that would you know significantly raise the prior but the thing is we don't have evidence independent evidence that he was even uh, an eyewitness right so again now that's just going to radically lower the prior in that um we also don't know his biases and evidence um you know like we don't know if maybe he has like um some some good reason to compromise his honesty or integrity or there's influences to the inaccuracy um you know even when we say biases and entrances they don't even have to be like um the person is being dishonest right because again that's different from credibility there might be psychological biases that would influence that might be um you know playing into whether or not um whatever the testimony would be considered um adequate right there might be psychological biases that are non introspectable to the agent who's providing the testimony that would influence whether or not the testimony is considered evidence stuff like that right so there's like a large set of conditions that would contribute in what we consider evidence that we have literally none of the conditions of not a single one when we consider the bible at least not that i'm aware of um you know and it's that's a strong reason why it's historically disputed i've actually talked very long ago in the past with i believe someone who was a bachelor in um in history he denied the existence of jesus um again like generally speaking even if um you know some phd tells me they believe if they're not able to like present me um the conditions that satisfy testimonial evidence for the the testimony sample there's just not reason for me to believe the testimony and then there's also stronger reason which is just when we consider the empirical analysis of survey it's just one of the most controversial views that jesus existed okay well if it was like such a empirically strong view it wouldn't be super um it obviously wouldn't be super controversial so now there's just two very 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 strong reasons for me not to consider a lot of what the bible says especially just the testimony as any form of ev evidence at all i feel you i see a couple other people both joined and left the live but yeah do you have like um any other questions I'm getting a lot of messages <laughs> No, honestly, I just I just wanted to see your viewpoint, honestly, because like I said, again, like I was never really trying to have a rebuttal, argue, or just make you believe. I just I just want to see your your perspective, you know. And I and I, mm -hmm. I respect a lot of things you've been saying because it's it's very like you gave me a lot of knowledge, you know, especially especially you explaining words that I I'm not familiar with, and I I respect that. Yeah, I just wanted to yeah, see no your problem. viewpoint. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna I'm probably I'm gonna probably head 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 out because I need a shower. I just I've been in my sweat from work <laughs> this whole time. But yeah. No. Yeah. You good? Yeah. All right. All right, man. Take care. Right. No. Yeah. Have a great one. Um. Yeah. There's only seven people here. Let's try and spam like the live. Everyone here. You can share around and like the live. Let's try and get someone up here. It might be the last person. I'm not sure. But I've been doing this for a while. With um. Sorry, yeah. Come on, guys, let's spam like the live. Let's try and get someone up here. Come on, guys, let's spam like the live. Share around. Um, if I don't get someone in the next, I don't know, eight minutes, I'm probably going to end the live.
Or should I just restart the live, right? I should probably just restart it. Also, oh, that was a great proof, um, Knuckles, the trees. Yeah, did you guys see that Mike earlier was like trolling as like a theist? <laughs> Dude, it was so funny. I'm not gonna lie, at first, it kind of got boring, but you know, for like the first 10 minutes, it was actually like really funny. Yeah, Mike was dressed as like a nerd. And his background was like, free will exists, God exists. And then like, whenever someone would come up, he's like, are you an atheist? And he's like, oh dear God, I'll pray for you. And then the person's like, what's your reason to believe in God? And he's like, I have two eyes, you can see me. Look how beautiful everything is. Look at the trees. Of course a God exists. I was like, dude, he was doing it spot on. I actually, I recorded like five minutes of it just because at first I was so funny. Like you would have thought that Mike would have been like a terrible actor. He actually wasn't. He was almost spot on with how theists are. So if you ever want that clip, I'll probably post it on the list that I'll share it to you if you want that. Because it was actually really funny. Fortunately, he already ended the live, but you know, watching the whole live would have probably been boring. <laughs> All right, I'll send it to you. I'm gonna restart the live.